So the question is, are there larger reasons to be infertile? And the answer is yes. Yeah. So the semen analysis makes the man, so this was the egg, chicken, egg conversation on the blog, which came first, the semen analysis made the, and at the end, I like kind of leave you hanging, and at the end I say, it's both. The man makes the semen analysis, and the semen analysis makes the man. But it's not a really good measure of it. So this is the other thing you have to know, which is it's a planetary view. I first gave this lecture at Google in 2011. I just said, you know what? Everyone treats male infertility or fertility as kind of an orb around the planet of health. Why aren't they, why aren't we, why isn't it part of health? Maybe it's part of health. Maybe it is reflecting health. It's not, it's the same planet, just a different continent. So I came up with this, and this is exactly what it was about, and started thinking this way. So there's a corner, the upper left-hand corner, which I consider the metabolic corner. Obesity, genetics, uh, blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease. And then there's the other stuff, sleep, stress. And there's the stuff that Western can check, like testosterone, prolactin, varicoceles. And, and then there's epigenetics, and there's things like this. So this is all a part of fertility. This is the new way to think about it. It's not, and so I can see you all doing a lot of this. Probably as important as anyone in Western medicine. Right? The big chunks of things here that you say, I know that, I know that. So I'm going to go through some details about why I believe this way and what's happened since basically a couple of us started believing this way. There's a relationship between infertility in men and cancer of the testis. There's a relationship between infertility and cancer of the prostate. And there's a relationship between overall health and infertility in men. And guess what's starting to happen? We're starting to see it in women, too, PCOS, things like that.